Monk fruit extract is exploding in popularity and it's quickly becoming a sweetener of choice for many people who are looking for a zero calorie sweetener that's also natural and plant-based. But the hype around monk fruit goes far beyond its sweetener properties. Many promote monk fruit for its medicinal effects like hypoglycemic or sugar lowering properties that help with insulin resistance and diabetes. Monk fruit is also thought to have antioxidant and anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory properties. Well in this video I'm going to review the strength of the evidence supporting those claims. I also want to review monk fruit's safety profile especially since more and more more companies are using monk fruit as a sugar substitute in their products. In fact, there were 8,000 consumer products sweetened by monk fruit on the market as of June of 2021, and there's continuing growing demand for use of monk fruit in foods like beverages, dairy, baked goods, cereals, and nutritional supplements. Lastly, I will tell you about who should and who should not be using monk fruit and I'll tell you about the things you need to watch out for if you decide to give monk fruit a try, as there's one specific group of people who should maybe reconsider consuming it. Hi, I'm Dr. Leonid Kim, and on this channel, I discuss the most up-to-date and evidence-based information on the topics of weight loss, metabolic health, and longevity. Let's get into it. Monk fruit has been first cultivated in southern China and northern Thailand, where it's known as Lo Hong Guo. And it's named after the Buddhist monks who first wrote about it all the way back in the 13th century. The monk fruit plant is rarely found in the wild and it's fairly difficult to cultivate, requiring just the right mixture of warm climate and misty mountains that provide protection from the sun. So monk fruit is only cultivated in the mountains region of southern China. And the Chinese health ministry documented monk fruit as edible and medicinal species that can be used in the treatment for things like common cold, sore throat, lung congestion, and even constipation. Now monk fruit is hard to store when it's fresh. So the fruit is normally dried before use and traditionally has been used to make teas and soups. And when it comes to its use as a sweetener, the principal component that gives monk fruit a sweet taste is magricides, or a compound that makes up about only 1% of the fresh fruit. The process of extraction to get the sweetener that we use today was first patented by Procter & Gamble back in 1995. And this monk fruit extract is claimed to preserve a substantial fraction of the magricides, specifically magricide 5, which makes it about two to 300 times as sweet as table sugar. This monk fruit extract is not absorbed in the upper gastrointestinal tract, so it provides zero calories. Now, when it comes to monk fruit's medicinal properties, the one that's been getting a lot of attention is its effect on blood sugars. In a recent study, look at the effects of magricide metabolites in rats with type two diabetes and found to have obvious antihyperglycemic effects by significantly reducing fasting blood glucose. It was also found to regulate insulin secretion by increasing GLP-1 levels with GLP-1 being the target of diabetes and weight loss medications like Ozempic or Manjaro. Other studies noted that a high dose supplementation of magricide rich extract in diabetic mice improved insulin response through the repair of beta cells in the pancreas. And magricides have also been shown to increase protection from the development of diabetic kidney disease. In addition to its potential use in diabetes, treatment with magricide 5 may have a role in the treatment of pancreatic cancer and it does so by inhibiting pancreatic cancer cell proliferation and by inhibiting angiogenesis in pancreatic tumors or basically interfering with the formation of the blood flow that usually feeds the growth of those cancers. Lastly, there were some animal studies that look into anti-inflammatory properties of monk fruit and more specifically in its role in the treatment of asthma. A study published in the Journal of Food Biochemistry found that administration of microsay 5 improved inflammation in the lungs of asthmatic mice and improved inflammation in the airways. These properties likely explain why monk fruit is used for lung congestion in traditional Chinese medicine. So these are pretty exciting properties, but I would caution that all of these studies are based on mice and rats, and we have yet to see any human trials to replicate these results. However, I do believe that out of all the sweeteners on the market today, monk fruit is the one that's gaining the most excitement and it looks to be the most promising. In fact, the president of Apura Ingredients, a company that is the leading supplier of sweeteners to the North American market, said that while stevia and monk fruit are both gaining momentum as natural sweeteners, monk fruit is positioned in the mid to high or high level product market, with monk fruit having a better overall taste 
and the advantage of being clean label. And personally, I'm starting to see more and more products sweetened with monk fruit. And with the increased use, we're bound to see more definitive human studies on the benefits and the safety of monk fruit. By the way, if you are using monk fruit as a sweetener, let me know in the comments below which brand you're using and why you picked that brand, as there are more and more options available now and the trend will only continue to grow. Lastly, with monk fruit becoming more and more popular, we have to talk about its safety. Well, the FDA first recognized monk fruit as generally regarded as safe first back in 2010 and most recently in 2018. Monk fruit has also been deemed safe for use in countries like Japan, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, although it's only been permitted for use in tabletop sweetener packets. Food Standards Australia and New Zealand also did not note any evidence of adverse effects in human studies from consuming up to 60 milligrams of monk fruit extract per kilogram of body weight per day. And in 2019, the European Food Safety Authority published their scientific opinion that the toxicity database of monk fruit extract is insufficient to conclude on the safety of the use of monk fruit extract as a food additive. Of note, that panel also cited a 90-day study where rats were fed with Magrasse 5 and observed the decrease in testes weight, both absolute and relative to brain. However, they did not see any effects on reproductive or developmental toxicity in rats that consumed it for 90 days. The panel did note that for male animals, the time of exposure did not cover the full length of spermatogenesis and therefore a longer term study at higher doses would be needed to clarify the effects of monk fruit extract on the reproductive health and development. So to wrap this up, let me tell you how I'm approaching monk fruit, a sweetener that I believe has the most potential and excitement, especially if you consider all of its medicinal properties. I think monk fruit is perfect for people who prefer a natural and a plant-based sweetener that's a great alternative to stevia. I do believe the jury is still out on monk fruit's medicinal effects, as we do not have any convincing human data, just studies done in animals, but it has been used in China for hundreds of years. And I do think there may be something to the anti-inflammatory effects seen in asthma, as monk fruit is often used for lung congestion and colds. I would emphasize that in traditional Chinese medicine, monk fruit is often used as a whole dry fruit as opposed to an extract. And that's important since the bioactive compounds that we attribute to the therapeutic effects of dried or fresh fruit may be different from the ones found in many of the commercial monk fruit extracts, which only contain a few magrasai compounds, with magrasai 5 being the most common. Lastly, I do believe it's safe to use monk fruit as a sweetener, and the only worry I have about monk fruit is the concern in regards to a decrease in testes weight in rats who were fed a diet high in monk fruit extract. Now once again, it is an animal study and it's hard to definitively say how much of that translates to humans. But if you are a man who would like to optimize your reproductive health, or if you're worried about your fertility, then I would just wait and hold off on using monk fruit until more safety studies come out. It's not a do or die situation and there are plenty of other great alternatives to monk fruit. And my favorite alternative to monk fruit is allulose, which is a sugar substitute that actually does have human trial data available with documented benefits when it comes to glucose metabolism. In fact, I made a video all about it and if you'd like to check it out, I'll leave a link to it right here. I hope this review was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.